Hi, I'm Heather Smith and welcome to Cloud Stories, a podcast exploring the accounting and business apps community. The next few interviews on the Cloud Stories podcast are live from Sweet World 2023 in Las Vegas, USA. I was kindly hosted by Oracle to attend their largest annual gathering of the NetSuite community at their flagship conference, Sweet World 2023. It was a conference on a scale that I'd never seen before. There was so much happening within the conference, around the conference, and also alongside the Las Vegas Strip. So hopefully over the next few episodes, you too can share in the energy and insights from the comfort of wherever you listen to podcasts. In this episode, I'm bringing you an interview with Don McLean, CEO of PKF Digital. PKF Digital is a leading NetSuite solution provider based out of Sydney, Australia. They are a team of experienced consultants, developers and support specialists who work with businesses of all sizes to help them make the most out of NetSuite and other cloud-based technologies. We had just attended a keynote entitled Suit Up, uh, delivered by NetSuite founder and EVP uh, Evan Goldberg. It's truly amazing that he founded the company has stayed there in the role for 25 years. His talk was quite personable. He um, raced on the stage without a suit um, and then a lady rushed onto the stage with a suit which gave him the opportunity to suit up uh, in front of us. So every so often he would be delivering, as he was delivering his talk, he broke out in a fast-talking used car salesman type rap and encouraged the audience to take advantage of special deals on offer. As he did this, a waving inflatable tube man appeared on stage. Um, So it was quite uh, jarring from a man in a suit talking about Um, cloud ERP solution to this uh, used car salesman sign of uh, lingo. Um, It was quite amusing. Um, I found it personally quite amusing. (laughs) Um, So over to the podcast, there's a little bit of background noise, but I don't think you'll find it too distracting. Um, And before I pass across to the interview with Don McLean, CEO of PKF Digital, can I encourage you to stay up to date with the curated content I'm sharing by signing up for the Accounting Apps newsletter available at heathersmithau.com. Hello, welcome to the Cloud Stories podcast. I'm very excited to be here with Don McLean, CEO of PKF Digital. Don, thank you for joining us. Really looking forward to speaking with you today. Can you share with us who you are, where you're from, and and what you're doing here today at Sweet World? Well, thank you very much for inviting me into your podcast, Um, Heather. Thank you. Um, That's really cool to be here. Despite my accent, I'm from Sydney in Australia, originally from Scotland. I've lived in Sydney for 26 years now. And, uh, yeah, so we've been... um, And the reason for me being here is um, clearly to uh, come to Sweet uh, Sweet World, uh, understand a bit more about the strategy and really celebrate the last 25 years of which I've been involved with NetSuite on and off for about 20 years of that. So it's really great to see some of the people that I haven't seen for a while and reacquaint myself and do a bit of networking as well. So when was your great. last one? Uh, the last Sweet World? Uh, last year. Okay. And okay. that was the first one after the pandemic, so I think there wasn't one for two or three years prior to that. So, uh, mm. so it's been good, and it's been a great energy. In fact, somebody was telling me earlier that there's more people here than there ever has been, and the energy in the room at the, uh, the keynote was just fantastic. It was yeah. No, and it's great good to see all the artificial intelligence stuff coming through <laughs> as well, you know. It seems to be the topic de, de rigueur these days, but, yeah, it's really cool to see it actually be practical as well, rather than just chat. GPT. It's good. Yeah, chat GPT, which is just a sort of component of uh, artificial intelligence. Yeah, exactly. Intelligence. Absolutely. And a lot of people sort of think that is artificial intelligence, but as I'm sure you know, it's yeah. not. It's just one yeah. component. Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure our audience knows because we, we, we drill, drill it into them um, many times and it has artificial intelligence has been around for, for decades now. Sure. We just keep evolving and evolving and evolving. It's very exciting where, where it's going. It is. So can you elaborate on your belief that technology should assist in delivering business results? Jeez, that's a big question. Um, 
I think it's really straightforward. I think sometimes in the technology game uh, and in the industry that I've been in for 30 odd years, we, we complicate things. We give them three letter abbreviations. We like, you know, and it becomes um, something that's a bit, a bit more difficult to understand. And it's not. It's really quite simple. I believe it's just about productivity. That's all it is about. It's about how can I take a number of systems and simplify them. And, and by systems, I mean both technology as well as business processes or, or a system that you could do that's maybe been done manually, maybe been done uh, using paper rather than actual technology. And that's what it's all about. It's, it's, it hasn't really changed in the last 20 odd years. It's really about how can I just take that technology and make people's jobs a bit more interesting and particularly these days it's really difficult to get good people and so isn't it a much better idea to try and automate some processes using technology um, and let those people rise and do something a bit more interesting so it's not even about people losing jobs mm. I don't believe, I believe that era is over it's really about how do you um, help them uh, do more. Mm, it is interesting we are in Las Vegas and, and wandering around even the stores here have got uh, please be kind, we are short of sure, staff, yeah. <laughs> um, things are going to take a little bit longer and I'm finding that sort of wherever you are in the world that seems to be the be the, the case. For sure. Um, yeah, so that, that is uh, the, perhaps the automation and technology can, can save us with that. So you launched NetSuite into the Australasian marketplace in September 2003, <laughs> as oh, you've told us. Boy. <laughs> September 2008 makes me feel feel old. I, I mean, it wasn't just me; it was a number of people. I, I just was privileged to to be involved in the company that did it, and I think uh, I was the uh, the one survivor, <laughs> rather than anything else, to to tell the story as other others went uh, elsewhere. But I mean, what a journey! It's just been phenomenal, and. I think the one thing that we did, and I was involved with my brother, would you believe, who who actually worked for Oracle um, just before we he, he, he did that. And I was from a telecoms background, so I worked for British Telecom for many years. And in between drinks at the pub um, or games of golf, we would get to talk about what we thought was the future for technology. And with my telecoms background, you could see even in those days the way that the bandwidth was going to expand, that the internet was going to take off, and with his sort of like knowledge of software, and it was really about that convergence. So we started talking about what would it look like, and then he found this um, company called NetLedger um, in his travels over to San Francisco and managed to bring that over to, uh, to Australia. And so we, yeah, just got started. So it was you and your brother who yeah, did it. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's other people as well, clearly. But it was that connection uh, with Oracle and that connection with uh, telecoms that really sort of gelled. And as somebody once said to me, he said, like, the definition of a pioneer is somebody who does something for about 10 years and then spends the next 10 years trying to make the money back that they lost in the first 10 years, <laughs> you know, for going <laughs> salaries and stuff. So... But it was, you know, it's been a great trip. There's been many ups and downs. There's been, you know, going, it was funny at the keynote uh, earlier today and uh, there was the familiar noise that we all had 20 odd years ago, the sound of a modem connecting and the sort of like, you know, the little the dashes going onto the Windows, I don't know, be Windows 95 or something like that. So it was those days. So it was, it was really strange trying to persuade somebody to move all their data from the cupboard at the end of the office into what we now know as cloud, but then it was an ESP or something. Um, and it was really, really difficult. It was difficult because people just didn't believe that it was secure. Mm. And it was only when we fl flipped it the other way around and said, why wouldn't you, that we actually started to get a bit of traction because it's, there's more security in a data center, you know, eyeball scanning to be able to get in and you know, your, your data's much more secure. But it was, it was tough. Because we were we were trying to get people to do things that they didn't really want to do, but yeah, it really benefited them. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. So, what convinced you that Netsuite is one of the best cloud technologies, and how does Netsuite enhance business productivity? So, big question, but 
how how do you talk to someone about that? So, so to answer the first part of your question about why I, I believe NetSuite is best, and then I'll go on to the next bit. And that is directly about. from your LinkedIn profile. Yeah, I know, <laughs> that's fine. No problems. I do believe it's the best, and, and the reason, if you think the technology as we as we used to talk about it ages ago, is really about a quite simple thing to buy an Oracle database in those days would be measured in hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? And I think of that, if you've got the Oracle database as being the cake, if you will, right? Maybe there's no icing on top yet, but the cake. And it costs you that amount to buy the cake. And the whole concept of NetSuite, which was revolutionary in its day, was to called multi-tenancy, which in effect meant that you weren't buying the whole cake, you were just buying a slice of that cake. But it was only the slice that you needed of that database with your data and that cut costs tremendously. And NetSuite was probably, the, was certainly the, the, the first uh, company to do that in the cloud in accounting. Uh, Salesforce had a similar type of technology, but that was really in the CRM uh, space. And so once you had that and you had your data, that was number one. So that was great. So you're, you're talking about it being cost efficient, if you will. The second part was really about the way that that data was produced into the browser using dashboards. And again, that is de rigueur right now. Everybody's doing it multiple ways of doing it, but it wasn't then. And then being able to just surface that data. So the, the conversation was always about one version of the truth because you had data across every aspect of your business, inventory, accounts receivables, your customer data, and so on and so forth. And that hasn't changed. And then the third thing is the ability to, to tailor the system, add fields, um, use scripts, and so on and so forth. And then for the upgrades, and there was two every year, would actually not cause that, that programming or scripting to fail. That was revolutionary as well, because in, I think it's still the case. You have an implementation of a, a, an on-premise um, a piece of accounting or ERP software, and you change it. When you go to the upgrade, you have to then go and rechange it again, so it costs you more money. So those are the three fundamental things and they still are the case today, and it's really, really good, and it's proven. So, thirty-six thousand customers, all on the same version of the software. Mm. Jeez, that's like pretty phenomenal stuff. Very and good. the second part of the question was about um, um, just how me. does NetSuite um, enhance business productivity? So, okay. how, if you're talking to a new potential client, sure. what would you say to them? It goes back to talking to the business, and, and what we do is we. we got a fairly unique way of doing that where we start talking to them about what, where are the problems or the roadblocks that you've got um, and we start digging into that to see how we could replace some of those roadblocks with either what they're doing with their existing system or if uh, we, we could enhance that by implementing technology. So in effect, we, we spend a few days going through all those business processes, but not just looking at improving them, actually finding out how much it's costing them. So let me give you an example. Um, you could be talking to somebody about their accounts receivables, and their accounts receivables are sitting on average of, you know, 25 days outstanding I think days sales outstanding is the is one of the metrics and of course as soon as you start saying okay um, what would it look like if you uh, could reduce that by five days by using particular technology that only gets you so far it's really about then okay but what does that mean to you in monetary terms so if you can save five days here therefore you're going to get your cash quicker and what's the interest you can make on that cash and so on and so forth or what could you use to deploy that so it's really spending time understanding those particular metrics and then we put a report back to them as a as, as a, a consulting engagement if you will to say here is where you will be able to save cost but also increase value mm. and that's the fundamental uh, thing about it and all that comes down again is to productivity right that's yeah. what you're trying to do you're just trying to make your people more productive without adding more people to the problem right 
<laughs> Absolutely. So can you elaborate? Um, you're talking about uh, sort of the consulting um, component of what you do there. Sure. Can you elaborate on the partnership between PKF and NetSuite and, and the relationship of then working with customers? Sure. I mean, the, the relationship that we've had for many years is a good one. Um, great people, um, you know, and we've we, there's a lot of people uh, are, are uh, within our business and within NetSuite business that we've known for like literally decades. So there's that. The the partner program that NetSuite have got, of which we participate in, provides a, a vast amount of resources. I mean, not only is the product pretty pretty good in terms of some of the uh, help uh, systems it's got. But they also have a program for partners called Sweet Life. Uh, everything in NetSuite begins with sweet. And so Sweet Life is almost like a way of life in that you have a whole lot of different on-demand training, um, ways of helping us market, um, just a really a, a great raft of different things. And then, in, in particular, so we're... We, maybe we're talking to somebody in a wholesale and distribution environment. There's a whole raft of different information that we can bring to bear across that value-added program that we, I talked about earlier that allows us to really get down to the nitty-gritty. So we are, uh, despite being part of a large um, organisation of about 1,000 people in, in, in Australia, our part of the business is only 20 people. So we don't have the resources to be able to create consulting engagements, but NetSuite give us that resource. And so we utilise a, a whole load of that and bring it to bear. And that's really where they help. So we are kind of like the tip of the iceberg, if you will, with everything underwater is NetSuite with everything that's sort of like, you know, there to help us to sustain the conversation with our customers. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. So many of our listeners are sitting in the small business accounting um, world and they're contemplating app stacks. By app stacks, I mean sort of smaller plug yeah, together sure, solutions right. from lots of different areas. Yeah, got it. What are the triggers or indicators that they should start contemplating an ERP solution like NetSuite? So most of your listeners are accounting or accountant related and and it's actually interesting because I believe that's exactly where it starts. <laughs> because when you so the triggers are are there's twofold. If you let's face it I would. I, my guess would be that most of your listeners will be using zero, for instance, mm. or if they're contemplating going to an ERP system, that's probably where they're starting. Zero is a phenomenal product, really, really good. But when you start um, having inventory, for instance, zero doesn't really do inventory that well, and you're starting to then having to integrate, and then you've got an Excel spreadsheet maybe with your customers on to track sales or prospects or whatever as soon as you start introducing those different as you put it the app stack you introduce integration problems as in you you can't change the phone number in one system and it reflect everywhere so that's one indication um, NetSuite historically always referred to that as a hairball which is a really good way of mm. thinking of it you've got all or maybe spaghetti is a better way of putting it because you've got that physical integration that you're having to do, but there's all those islands of data everywhere. So that's one indication. And again, that goes back to productivity. If you're finding that you're having to type different things into different systems, or it takes you days, if not weeks, to get your reporting system, and then of course, once you've done the reports, they're out of date by, by definition. So there's one indication. The other one that we use quite a lot now, and it's, it, it talks to the growth of a company when they start off um, they tend to have maybe one instance of zero when you start adding more instances of zero because you've got more companies or you've got more countries that's a great example of when you should start looking for a, a for a bigger system because the consolidation that you have to do becomes really really complicated and i've seen some horrendous spreadsheets that we do for clients in the accounting side where there's like 32 tabs of different results trying to reconcile currencies and tax regimes and all the rest of it. And NetSuite and systems like it, they, they cope with that really, really well. All the elimination accounts, all the way of being able to slice and dice the data so you could see across all of your companies just by product line 
exactly what's happening. So you can then diagnose problems or see surface information uh, in different ways. And that's that's one sort of like benefit of having that whole system there as well. Mm. So you're really... Uh, business is becoming complex and yeah. you're looking to scale. Yeah, absolutely. And, and those are just indicators of when you should be thinking there must be a better way to do this mm. because you want to get on with running your business. You don't want to be mucking around with spreadsheets. Well, some people do, but uh, generally it's not a way of... of, of, of love their spreadsheets. Well, they do, and it's interesting, <laughs> that one, having just uh, now working in an accounting uh, thing. I, I, I walk into the office. Yes, I do walk into an office, and there's a lot of Excel spreadsheets around. It's not, that's not to say you have to stop using your Excel spreadsheets. That's not what I mean. So we would never take that away from them. But there's a better way of getting the information from an integrated system into the spreadsheet for you to do your analysis. But, mm. yeah, so. <laughs> um, can you talk to the conversion process that they need to sort of start getting their head around? Sure. Um, so there's a, there's a number of things that you need to think about. Um the f- the first one's data, and when you think about it, it's really all about data. Um, you know, and, and and an accounting system is in effect a database that's just got some logic on, on top of it. So, how much data do I want to take from my existing system, and, and and where do I want to put that? And that sounds like it should be really easy, but it's not. Uh, static data and what I would call dynamic data are very different. By static data, I'm thinking about customer uh, records. So they're pretty much, you know, the address, what the total sales were the last year, the year before. That's pretty standard and easy to take across. But the bit that you should really think about and quiz whoever you're talking to uh, in, in, in implementing the system is about that dynamic data. What about the invoices? What about the sales orders? What about the quotes? And all that rich history that you've got, will you use it in the new system? If so, how will you use it? Is it okay, sorry to go back to it, is it okay to just keep it in Excel spreadsheets? Um, Or is there some archive system that you can just keep? So that, because within the, the first year, you certainly want to do comparisons, for instance. So there's that, there's the data. <clears throat> the other thing that people forget about, and I think this is really, really important, it's not the technology, it's the change. It's changing from the way that I invoice a customer with a screen that looks like this to something that's going to be very different. And so there's a, there's a lot of training that we need to do. There's a lot of um, consulting and setup. Um, and those particular elements. But think about one of the the, the things we start talking to executive of companies is about their digital maturity. So are the people in your organization digitally mature enough to be able to and want to cope with the next level of system? If that's a no, then what do we do to train them to get them to that particular point? And nobody really thinks about that. They really don't. But yet, that can be the difference between an ERP implementation uh, failing or actually going successful. Yeah, there's a lot of training. And, and there are lots of other things that you have to do which are ticking boxes. But the technology, it tends to look after itself. It's the humans. That's the ones. It's the humans we need to look after, right? Yeah. A <laughs> lot of training and a lot of ongoing training as well. Yeah, Every exactly. Every time something, new, a new module comes out or evolves yep. and updates. And uh, like the guy on the stage actually said, I've been using it for a year. And every time I open it up, I find a new button or a new yeah. setting. Yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> so yeah and that can be good and bad, though. I mean, yeah. like you know, it, it sounds it sounds really you know interesting. It's like opening a, a book and getting a new chapter that you never never knew existed or something like that. But um, but but I think that's where the likes of ourselves as partners come in because yeah. it's our job to understand the customer and also understand the technology. So I always think of it as being you've got one foot in the technology camp, you've got one foot in the business camp, and then you're able to then um, think about your clients. I mean, even as we're sitting in the um, keynote and you look at a particular function, at the back of your mind, well, well, this is me, maybe it's not everybody, I'm thinking, oh, that would be really good for customer X. Mm. So you're mentally thinking and applying what is on a big screen in front of tens, tens of thousands of people to 
the company that's in Adelaide that is doing, you know, making products and how that will affect them. Mm. And I think that's the key. Mm, absolutely. Can you sh- briefly share with us um, a case where NetSuite has improved client profits and efficiencies? Maybe there's one that you can sort of... Sure. There's um, there's a, a long-standing cu- customer of ours uh, over in Perth in Western Australia called Thermomix. I don't know if you're familiar with the Thermomix. It's a why would you describe a thermomix? It's, it's the like a, machine that does every all the cooking that you could possibly want. That's the one, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, I don't have one myself. Because, uh, uh, but, neither um, do I. Uh, yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> but um, no, so thermomix, for instance, um, they've been customers uh, customers of ours for about eight years. And when they first came to us, the real problem was um, they had a warehouse management system, they had an accounting system, and they had, um, I think it was a CRM system, all of which were different. So all of their customer database. And the customers, they were at the time selling direct, and they, they did it in such a way, it was almost like... Um, it's like a party. So somebody who's the demonstrator chef comes mm. along and there's a party of 20 people and does a demonstration and then takes orders. So there was a big, huge sort of like need to go from that sales process right the way through to delivery, you know, with inventory and, and shipping and distribution and warehouse management and all sorts of ancillary goods. It's a very, very complicated uh, process. And we moved them uh, within nine months to NetSuite and the productivity gains that we, they got were phenomenal. I think they were growing at the time about 25% sort of year on year, which which sustained it. But we didn't help them grow by 25% year on year per se. What we did is we made sure that they could do that and be profitable mm. and not have to recruit more people so they would keep the, the costs, like the fixed costs, if you will, um, constant, but but grow revenue and increase profits. Mm. So mm. that's I think that's a great example, yeah. I and mean, that's one of many that we've got. And it allows them they they can sort of relax and scale. I'm not sure they would say they would relax, but uh, yeah, they're certainly a well, bit more. Well, they well, can sleep at night. They can I think it's that. Night, uh, not you know. stress about their systems. Yeah, and, exactly. And, and yeah. scale. And then so. they can think about what more they can do because sometimes these systems can be a bit of a competitive advantage mm. because if you're going to make sure that you're going to deliver on time yeah. and then your customer quality customer satisfaction is going to go up you yeah. put your customer satisfaction up you get loyalty loyalty means that people are going to talk about it oh people uh, do they talk they about do. it they <laughs> do yeah the thermal mix is it's almost like some uh, uh, a form of religion uh, right my yeah. business uh, partner's got one and you wouldn't do without it it's like you know. they do talk about it so what's one thing that you've learned from attending sweet world today I have learnt, um, I'd be really interested in the AI uh, stuff that's happening. And I, as we talked earlier, there's a lot of hype around it. And uh, I was in a session, it was following on from the keynote, there was in a session today which was talking about specifically what NetSuite is doing around that. So first of all, I learnt that there's a key team of 20 people that's just been formed within NetSuite to tap into everything else in Oracle, and they're going to increase that in three months to 100 people. Mm. So it's a fairly significant sort of like step up and investment in AI. And it's not, there is an element of the chat GPT, but the real key to this and some of the, the things that they were showing us is how you can apply it to help Again, goes back to productivity, right? Um, we've given an example of how it, you can get it to amalgamate a whole load of different fields to write a product description that can automatically go into a website. And if you're implementing a system that's got 60,000 products, that's a big job. Mm. And if you can get somebody like an AI to uh, set it off to do it and get that AI sort of like um, chat GPT-like uh, thing to do it within the product with no additional charge, so I'm insured. Um, And that's just one example of many that they're trying to do. Then you start seeing things like all the data that's there with the the proactive or preemptive. It's like uh, one example that was given was about cash. I want to, my sales are down. What's the effect on cash? And then it's almost like going through a scenario analysis to say, okay, what if I did this? What if I discounted the product by that amount? 
what is it likely to do based on all the history and the richness that you've got and sometimes external information, you know. The, the, the classic ice cream vendor that's going to sell more ice cream on a hot day rather than in the middle of winter. And, and, and taking all that, so it's the practical elements of that that make it easy because it's put into the product for us all to use. So we don't need to reinvent that. That is, is, is the one key learning I've taken mm. from, uh, from the last couple yeah. of days. should be very exciting. I think I yeah. was... Um, what piqued my interest was the benchmark, the benchmarking solution yes, that they were right. talking about and saying how not only would it benchmark, not only would it compare you to your competitors, but um, using anonymised aggregated data, That's right. but it would surface suggestions of how your competitors were improving yeah, no, their productivity yeah. and perhaps you should be doing it this yeah, way too. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah, that's and, really cool. And that is, that, that to me, again, I, I hate to go back to the, that's productivity. <laughs> that's taking something and letting the digital technology help your business and, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. So, thank you so much, Don, for joining me on the Cloud Stories um, podcast. How can our listeners get in contact with you? Well, thank you for having me. Um, they can get in touch with me quite easily via email. Uh, Don.McLean, M-C-L-E for elephant, A for apple, N for Nora, just in case my accent gets in the way there, at pkf.com.au. Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope you like listening to that interview with Don McLean, CEO of PKF Digital sharing insights and experiences from his 20-year journey with NetSuite. Many thanks to Oracle who kindly hosted me to attend Sweet World 2023 in Las Vegas. From here, I suggest you subscribe to the Informative Accounting Apps newsletter, which gives you a great overview of the ecosystem space. It's available at heathersmithau.com. I encourage you to connect with me on LinkedIn and subscribe to the Cloud Stories podcast. I'm Heather Smith and you've been listening to the Cloud Stories Podcast.